Okay. Um, well, the title of my lecture is The Mythology of Tall. So this is quite a vast, big subject. It could be about anything, but... Um, well, the world of guitars is full of myths and beliefs, whether, whether it's about the weight of the guitar, um, it could be about, uh, you know, which wood species works the best. Is it, you know, needs to be mahogany to work good. It could be about the finishing methods that you use. It could be about the fret materials you use. It could be about where the guitar was made. Some of us believe that guitars made in the United States of America are the only ones uh, that are good. Or it could be when the guitar was made. In the 50s, everything was better. Nowadays, it's maybe not so good anymore. Well, okay, this is all, all um, myths, and it's just that. Sometimes it would be nice to know where does the myth or the belief come from. My wife told me some years ago this uh, little story about uh, a family uh, having a Christmas together. And the daughter was seeing her, uh, her mother preparing the Christmas ham to put to the oven. And, uh, and every Christmas the mother sliced off this chunk of, of the of ham before putting the ham to the oven and the daughter was wondering that well, why are you doing that every year? It's like a, it's a good chunk of meat and you're always taking it away. And the mother was telling that uh, well you know this is the way it's supposed to be done. I've always done like this. My mother did it like this. And uh, well the daughter little didn't leave it to this later on she asked from the grandmother about this and and uh, found out that the grandmother's oven was too small. Couldn't fit the Christmas ham to the oven. <laughs> so, but it's supposed to be done that way. You know, it's always done, been done that way. So that's one example of, you know, that myth or belief can, can become out of something that is, has just nothing to do with reality. And I'm, of course, I'm not like, um, I'm not claiming that. The, the vintage guitar, the 50s Strat or Les Paul or whatever, is not a good guitar. But um, I've always been some, somewhat of like a skeptic analyzing guitars very much and always wanted to find out the essence of it. Why? Why is something good? And um, Les Paul. Gibson was Paul was my first love in guitars. I had a friend who had a 1957 gold top Les Paul collector and I had a chance to play this guitar a long, long, long time ago. And I loved the guitar. And, uh, and then I was always disappointed. I went to music stores, I tried Les Pauls and they were always disappointing. They weren't like that old guitar. But what, what is it that made that guitar so good? And um, I suppose that's kind of the, the road I'm still on, you know, looking for answers and, you know, trying to uh, develop in my uh, craft and, and uh, uh, guitar design and as a guitar maker to, to find out why is a good guitar a good guitar, and how to achieve it. And, um, well, first of all, I, I believe that electric guitar, maybe it's obvious to all of you guys, but not, not to, to everybody, it, it is not. That electric guitar is uh, an acoustic instrument. It's every bit as an acoustic instrument as, a, as an acoustic guitar. As a, as a comparison, a human voice. If you take your um, favorite singer and, and, and you put your favorite singer to sing through the crappiest microphone, the crappiest PA system, and 
next to the same thing from the best available equipment, you're still going to recognize that voice of your favorite singer. You're going to recognize it's him or her. So I would. This is my comparison as a, as an for electric guitar and the pickup and the amplifier and the system that you're you're playing through. Um, the guitar itself needs to be. It's. I mean, it's a sum of huge amount of variables, and every detail makes a difference. Some features make bigger differences than other, but but every detail I believe makes a difference and and. Um, Electric guitar as an acoustic instrument needs to provide healthy frequency range. If there's something missing from the guitar itself before plugging it into an amplifier, you can't just make it up with a pickup. If there's a frequency missing that you need, you can't make it up. You can't just put it there anymore. You can take things down, you can try to boost something that doesn't come quite as good as you want, but you can color the sound of the guitar, but you can't invent things. You can't make one sound completely different with a pickup. And uh, yeah, so every detail makes a difference. The construction of the guitar, in all its the the way the guitar is um, made. We're going to be talking about now. Well, you know the mythology of tone and if you think of of course there's like loads of different kinds of instruments but we'll now narrow down the subject to to talk about the Les Paul style guitar. I'm using the Les Paul now as a common name it's obviously the Gibson Les Paul is the original paint but uh, um, it has more become in our uh, culture it has become sort of like a style or one mainstream of electric guitar. People refer commonly to Strat, whether it's built by Tom Anderson or John Sir or Fender. And in the same way, the Les Paul has become sort of like a common name. So I'm using that now. And um, yeah, the Les Paul is, is constructed, or my unicorn guitar is constructed as well. A similar way, the way the neck joins to the body with a tenon joint, the car top and the headstock angle, and the, the, the sort of like a violin construction where you have a car top and you have a you have a tailpiece and you have a, a bridge, which are two different items. If you put a wraparound bridge to this guitar, it makes alteration to the tone. I'm not saying that it makes it worse, but it makes it a bit, little bit different because this one, you have a tailpiece pulling the strings this way, and you have a bridge that is pulling the or, or uh, the strings are pushing the bridge downwards against the carved top. So these are things that um, contribute to the tone of the guitar. <coughs> 